Hello and welcome to Realm's Edge Gaming. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the first story in the six-part Chronicles of the Wanderer series from the White Dwarf issue 460. The story is titled Mother of Fire. Um, and in the narrative, a rune son is born to the fire slayers of the Scaravorn. Yet, as the warriors of the lodge gather for the rite of naming, the fires of Mothazar burn hotter than ever before and the wisdom of a white-bearded warrior must be heeded to avoid disaster. As a brief introduction, the story starts with an interesting opening paragraph. Dwarden, as all peoples of the mortal realms know, are a proud and insular folk, as reluctant to ask for a stranger's aid as they are to freely offer their own. And yet, in all Dwarden traditions, there is a similar legend, an aged traveller, by whose timely arrival calamity will be averted or intractable wrongs righted. Who is this white-bearded wanderer? From whence does he come, that all Dwarden peoples recognise and know him? And where does he go when his act of charity is done? So, we meet our first character, Helka, as she is carrying her unnamed flameling of a month-old son, to a ledge of rock overlooking Mothizar, which seems to be a magmic stream flowing below them. Helka is humming a lullaby about blood and gold to distract him from the heat, and imagining the foes he would slay, battles he would win, and even envis envis envisioning the glorious ways that he would die in battle when he's older. There are three Dwardin, waiting for her at the precipice. There is an elderly Dwarden in his dimming years called Morthran, who is an ancient rune master, and he's muttering invocations to control the heat and power of Mothizar. Next, we've got Tangrorn, who's a battlesmith, and he's got um, a staff that he's beating on the ground in, in a rhythm, in a pulsing rhythm. Next, in between them, we've got Helka's partner, Yord Grimnir, and he's the rune father of the Scaravorn Lodge. And both he and Helka are very excited, as at their age, they did not expect to have a child. The rune father is holding his arm out over the heat, um, and he starts off by getting a handful of grit, and he throws it into the fire. And then he says, from the fires of breaking are we made. By the fires of making are we made strong, and by the fires of our own deaths do we return, and from fire do we rise to fight and die again. And as he removes his arm from the, the fire, the skin is reddened and cracked, and it shows the flaming ergold runes that burn within them. At this point, we've got other fire slayers who, who walk to the small group, and these are from other lodges. Um, and what they do is they're actually there to, to kind of pay their respects um, and to wish the, the, the couple well. Um, and, you know, they throw their own handfuls of grit into the fire um, after they've kind of given their well wishes. And this is where we meet um, our strange Dwarden character. And I'll just read you the kind of extract where it says that. It says, amongst the last group to make its walk was a warrior made striking by the white crest of hair pluming from his helmet. A beard of the same colour, dressed in gold rings, reaching well past his ankles. His face was old, and yet, unlike Mothran, the rune master, he seemed stronger for his years. The way that lava will thicken and harden over time to become rock. His eyes were older yet, but at the same time harboured such a capacity for mirth that hell could not meet them without feeling the solemnity of the occasion slipping from her. Urgold stood at his leather-hard torso, but the runes they described were unfamiliar. His war gear, too, was exceptionally fine for a warrior of his rank. A strong-looking lad, he muttered in passing. Thank you, Hearth Carl, she said, bowing her head in reply. The Dwarden grinned, 
fire blackened teeth at her and continued on his way. Helka soon lost him to the throng. So, the ceremony then moves on. The other fire slayers move away to a respectable distance and Mothran, Mothran, sorry, the elderly rune master, who'd overseen the naming of the rune father, that's Jord Grimnir, Helka's partner, um, is kind of leading the proceedings. And they wanted him to do it because he'd kind of been part of the naming ceremony for um, Jord Grimnir, and I think his father before him. So even though he was elderly, as we said before, in his dimming years, they still wanted him to be a part of the ceremony. But unfortunately, in his kind of old age, he's struggling to um, to kind of keep control over the fire. And Mothizar is an inferno that's roaring. So what Jord Grimnir says is that what he is going to do is um, he kind of gives this speech. He says, we are the fire, Jord Grimnir yelled at, the, yelled at them. In our birth and in our death, we are the lords of our own lives. We fight so that we may die and join the fire willingly when it is our time. He turned fully to face the boiling chasm. The young rune son held firmly between his giant fists and not before. He thrust the child into the heat. The ergol stood in his forearms, flaring with the acrid smoke. So what's happening here is Tangrawn is going to beat his staff onto the floor in kind of a rhythmic pulse. And Jord Grimnir is going to hold his son above the um above the kind of the fire and the heat. And what he has to do is he has to hold his son there until he um starts to cry. The longer that the son can withhold withstand the heat, the kind of more impressive it is. And Jord Grimnir says that the great great grandfather managed to last nine beats of Tangrawn's stuff on the floor before crying. But as he's holding his son there, they reach the nine beat and still the son hasn't cried. And Helka is saying, stop, your arms are burning. But Jord Grimnir won't. He says that he feels like he will have been shamed by his child until they eventually reach 15 counts. And unfortunately, Morthron loses control of the fire and a wall of flame shoots up. He staggers back, Jord Grimnir staggers back from the kind of precipice, but unfortunately, he's dropped his son. Helka is obviously devastated, and she lunges forward, and she's about to jump down the crevasse um, to, to kind of go after her son, but she's held back, and it says, um, Easy lass, said the voice attached to the restraining hand on her shoulder. That'd be the last unwise thing you ever do. Unhand me, Helka snarled. I will when you stop pulling so hard to go over. She spins round and one hand raised into a fist, finding herself face to face with the white-haired hearth carl she'd traded pleasantries with earlier. She would have knocked down her own father had he been stood behind her, even Grimnir himself, and without care for the consequences. But something about the Dwarden's expression stayed her temper. The certitude of years radiated, radiated off him like warmth from a stone. Wait, he said. For what? Listen. For... You'll know when you hear it. And then she heard it. A thin and frail, frail cry, almost buried under the infernal, never-ending outbreath of volcanic sound. So, obviously, Helka is absolutely furious um, that, you know, her son has been dropped. Um, and we, we kind of, the, the story kind of proceeds with them deciding that um, Helka, Mothron, Tangron and Azkhan is going to go down on hooks and lines. So, Azkhan is the name of the um, the white-crested enigmatic Dwarden. And um, she, she asks him, she says, what is your name, Hearthcarl? This is when they're deciding who's going to go down to look for their son. What is your name, Hearthcarl? Helka asked. Around here, I've always gone by Azkarn. With which rune father do you travel? 
said Jord Grimnir, struggling to sit up, with Tangron struggling equally to restrain him and tend to his burns. I come alone. I'd heard of Mephizar and the right of naming, and I came to witness it. So, Jord Grimnir is, is, when they hear their son crying, he's actually, um, he's pleased. He thinks that their son's going to be kind of a legend, he says a, a rare one. Um, but he he can't go down because he's he's too badly burned. So it is those four that we said before: Helka, Mothron, Tangron, and Ascar. And they're going to go down um, on these kind of lines and hooks to have a look for the um, for the for the sun that's gone down there. So they get everything ready, um, and um, they they decide that that's what they're going to go and do. They're not too sure sure how far. The, the bottom of the um the kind of chasm goes to. And as they're kind of abseiling down, listening for cries, As Khan starts to sing the final bits of a song. And Helka thinks it's a very strange song. Um and it says here, her lips mimic the shape of the words, despite the unfamiliarity of the dialect and the verse, calling as they did to something fundamental in her, beneath the heat and the wrath. It spoke to her of ancient sagas, of times lost, legends of yesteryear, and a future that might yet be as golden. As Khan was well ahead of them all. As badly as Helka suffered, she could imagine how fierce the conditions must be for him, beyond the shielding influence of Mothran's powers. What strange gifts did the runes in that fire slave's body provide? She wondered. A resilience to heat that surpassed even that of a master, or the Zagrim. Immunity to fire and pain. Who was this fire slayer? What rune father beyond the legendary Fjol Grimnir himself could command the axe of such a carl in their hearth guard? What is this song that you sing? Tangron called, yards from death, and yet unable to resist the glimmering of a nugget of ancient lore. The hearth carl was silent for a while as though he generally, genuinely struggled to recall. A ditty I once heard. And, and that's kind of all he says on the matter. So they're making their way down to the bottom of the crevasse. And unfortunately, the crying stops. And when they finally reach the bottom, they come to a magma droth nest that's just full of smashed eggshells. Helka is devastated. As she explains, magma droths are incredibly territorial and she basically will have eaten the sun and it, that will have been it. As Khan says that they should enact a grudgment on the magma droth and kill it. And there is a bit of a kind of discussion between the um, the, the kind of Dwarden characters that are down there as they're kind of agreeing what to do, um, what would be the best kind of course of action but eventually they, they do decide to do that. So what they do is they, they kind of go after the magma droth and eventually they, they find it. It's, it's able to kind of disguise itself using some kind of camouflage. It can change its skin tone. So it kind of goes from gold to reds to blacks. And at first you don't realize it's there, but it, but it is, it's this massive magma droth. Eventually they do manage to kill it. And Helka actually feels pity for the creature she kind of realises what it's like, um, you know, from mother to mother. She's just lost her son. You know, this magma droth was kind of only defending its young. So she can hear the kind of crying of the, um, the, the little magma droths, the hatchlings. But they can also hear more crying. And what they do is they go down into a um, small tunnel and they actually find... Um, the, 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 the lost son that had been dropped and they are all incredibly shocked um, and they believe that what's happened is that the Magma Droth um, has taken her five hatchlings along with um, Helka's baby and she's mistook him for a hatchling and she's actually taken him into the um, this kind of smaller um, offshoot of a tunnel um, and, and he's actually kind of saved so it goes on to say here um new hatched said tangron behind her 
The magma droth we slew must have mistaken the rune sun for one of her own. Maybe, said Azkarn. He walked to the tunnel's mouth. Um, unfortunately, in, in, in the battle, um, Mothron has been, has been killed. So he hasn't survived, unfortunately. Um, he, he, he comes to the front. He walked to the tunnel's mouth bearing Mothron's body. Or maybe the daughters of Vulcatrix seek to dominate the sons of Grimnir, just as you would conquer them in turn. Grudgment begrets grudgment. As it ever was, so it must always be. The hearth carl nodded towards the clutch of hatchlings. A fine stable to gift a young son, rune son, eh, lass? He looked up. Something combustible, almost ephemeral about him in the aftermath of battle. Promise me you teach him something other than war, though. The fire slayers deserve more than their god's worst hour. I swear it, Helka murmured, her attention fully on her son's face. Slack now in exhausted slumber against his mother's breastplate. I would have abandoned him to a magma droth, if not for your insistence. If this is all you ask in payment, then it is yours. She looked up. The hearth cowl fizzed around the edges of her tired eyes. Why did you come here this day? Why did you aid us? As Khan shrugged. Why do the matrons of the Scaravorn wear armour? The warriors might say it is to protect us. I'd wager they do. What do you say? She thought about it. I'd say that someone has to. With a knowing look, the half carl turned as though to leave. Wait, said Tangrawn. Where are you taking Mothron's body? Azkan smiled, his eyes glimmering with familiar mirth. To his maker. With that, he did turn. And he did leave, the smoke and embers folding in to envelop and scatter him to the eight winds as though neither he, his axe, nor Mothron, the bloodsmith, had ever been real at all. For a long time neither Halka nor Tangron felt that there was anything more to be said. Where did he go? The battlesmith asked at last. Halka did not answer. All she could do was take the half cowl at his word. He had taken Rune Master Mothron back to their maker. Have you a name for him? said Tangrawn as the silence stretched. I do. Helka looked down at her sleeping child. A hero's name. So, that is the story, the first story in the six part series, um, The Chronicles of the Wanderer, titled Mother of Fire. I really do hope you've enjoyed um, the kind of I guess, the abridged version of the story. Um, it definitely um, kind of gives some thought at the, at the end about who this mysterious Dwarden is. And I'd love to get your opinions in the comment below. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, if you could leave a comment below, I'd love to chat with you. And if you've not already subscribed to the channel, if you could consider doing so, that would be fantastic too. Hope to speak to you soon. And thanks again. Bye-bye.